Ah, vale. Buenos dias. I had that fat finger thing going there. I had paused my video, so I need to record the first 15, 20 minutes of class because they're left off of the, the video that we really had going with class because um, uh, my fault entirely. Anyway, bueno, y uh, para los de ustedes que están en casa, for those of you who are at home and who are not able to visit us um, or be with us during class time. This is for those of you who exclusively view the, the uh, video of class. Uh, we started class off with uh, uh, me just asking if people had questions about that little reading because people uh, did a reading on El Viaje. It was called El Viaje, the trip. Uh, y las preguntas están, the questions are on, las preguntas están en la página 176, 176. Questions for that little El Viaje article are on 176. They asked, a Isabel le gusta viajar? Does Isabel like to travel? ¿Por qué escoge Italia? Why does she choose Italy? ¿Qué tiene que hacer antes de viajar? What does she have to do before traveling? ¿Qué piensa hacer ella durante el viaje? What does she plan to do? Piensa hacer, plan to do. What does she plan to do during the trip? ¿Qué hacen los otros pasajeros? What do the other uh, passengers do? ¿Piensa usted que Isabel va a viajar? Do you uh, think that Isabel is going to travel? Um, we only had one little question, somebody who wanted to know how to express a specific idea, so that didn't require a lot of our time. Uh, we moved on to review of llevar, and I did want to show everybody the uh, board, the Nearpod board, which uh, showed us, oh, and I'm sorry, I need to call that back up. We'll have that up in a minute. Um, the board, the cork-like board, the fake post-it board where everybody posted uh, ideas on different ways to use Jebar. And it is worth it for us to take some time to review that. I did spend maybe a good uh, five to 10 minutes um, because there were a few little things in here that needed a little bit of cleanup which is okay. Um, and we wanna see what those are and how to always make our communication better. Um, aquí, and it's taking me a moment here to pull that up, but it always helps to look at everything, to see other people's ideas that worked really well and um, also to see what needs a little bit of tweaking. And when I share this board, I am going to enlarge it a little bit to make it easier for you to read on screen as you follow along with me. You'll see some names of who posted various ideas. Aquí and here it comes. Okay. Ah, por ejemplo, llevo los papeles a la oficina. I'm taking the papers to the office. I'm carrying these things into the office. Quiero llevar mis pantalones azules esta noche. I'm going to wear, here we've got llevar for wear, clothing. And this wear is used more in Spain than in Latin America. I'll show you a snippet of a couple of llevar ideas that show you that, okay? Quiero llevar mis pantalones azules. I want to wear my blue pants. Esta noche just tells when, tonight. Mi esposa me lleva dos meses. My husband's got two months on me. He's two years, uh, yeah, two months, two months older than I am. Me lleva dos meses. That is a kind of specific use. You probably won't need that one all the time, but it's a good example to show. Llevo mucho dinero cuando voy al cine. I take a lot of money when I go to the movies. Yeah. Uh, I take along a lot of money. Ella lleva dos libros a la escuela todos los días. 
she takes two books to school every day. Ellos llevan a su madre a casa, muy importante. You'll see this in the video clip. They take their mom home. A casa is home, not the house, home, a casa. Llevan a su madre. This is something um, we're going to see highlighted in the clip. Llevan a su madre. We need that little a su madre. And the a su madre does not mean to her mom. It means taking, or excuse me, their mom. Uh, the a su madre means their mom. It means that madre is receiving the action of being driven somewhere. Madre is the direct object. So the a really doesn't translate to mean anything at all. It's just the a personal. It is telling who we transported and that who we transported is a human being, not a load of cargo. When the direct object is a human being, we need that little word a. So this sentence was a really great example of ellos llevan a su madre. They're taking their mom a la casa. That a does mean to, but the a from a su madre does not mean to. It is the a personal saying, here comes a direct object that's a human being. Okay. Uh, le llevo a mi amiga una botella de vino para su cumpleaños. I take a bottle of wine over to my friend. The le llevo, the le there tells me that I'm taking the bottle to this person, a mi amiga. Le llevo a mi amiga una botella de vino, a bottle of wine, para su cumpleaños, the reason for the gift, her birthday. Mi vecino lleva 20 años en Estados Unidos. My neighbor has been in the U.S. for 20 years. Llevamos muchas cosas para nuestro viaje de campamento. We take lots of stuff. <laughs> Many things, muchas cosas, for our camping trip. Para nuestro viaje de campamento. Okay. Mi novio lleva a su padre a la médica. We need to change that to a la médica because it's a lady doctor. A la médica. My boyfriend takes his dad. Mi novio lleva a su padre. A su padre indicates not to his dad, but that dad is the direct object. He is the one getting the ride. Mi novio lleva a su padre a la médica. Llevo ropa cómoda en casa. I wear comfy clothes in uh, or at home, at home en casa. Llevo mi celular. I take my cell phone. Llevo mi celular y escucho música. And I listen to music. Cuando camino, when I walk. Buen ejemplo. Mi hermana, mi hermano y yo nos llevamos muy bien. My sister, my brother, and I get along well. Nos llevamos, we get along with each other. Literally, we carry on well with each other, but we would say get along. Nos llevamos muy bien. We get along very well. Cuando viajamos, mi esposa es estupenda. Uh, es Dorotea, that's Dorothy. Uh, lleva mucho equipaje. She takes lots of luggage. Y necesitamos todo, and we need everything. Por supuesto, of course. Mi pastel favorito lleva tres chocolate, uh, tres rondas de chocolate, uh, chocolate agri, agridulce, azúcar, huevos, crema de tártaro, una pizca de sal, extracto de vainilla, mantequilla y jarabe de maíz ligero. Uh, ligero. Here he's giving a whole list of all the ingredients. We can use llevar to tell ingredients. What kind of stuff is in a dish? What kind of stuff is in a dish? Okay. Uh, what kind of ingredients? What, what types of food are included in what you eat? 
this idea of using yebar to give a list of what's inside of uh, something that has been cooked up, that's something you may want to use at a restaurant. If you are a vegan and you want to know, lleva uh, productos de animales, does it have animal products? You want to know that. So lleva is important when you go to a restaurant, when you have dietary needs and you want to know what an ingredient is in that dish that you're ordering. Okay, desde la pandemia, no comemos mucho en restaurantes. Since the pandemic, we don't eat a lot in restaurants. Normalmente pedimos comida para llevar. Muy importante, pedimos comida para llevar. We order food to go. And when you use that phrase to go, it's always said as para llevar. Para llevar, meaning you're going to take it off with you. You're going to take it off, out, not sit and dine in, but you're taking it out with you, para llevar. And we always use it as para llevar, we don't conjugate the llevar, because it's after that word para. Words like para, en, con, de, a. If a verb follows any of those words, those are prepositions, para, de, en, con, a. A verb coming after a preposition does not get conjugated. It stays as an infinitive. That's just a 100% kind of blanket rule they use with word order. A word coming after a preposition stays as infinitive. Therefore, para llevar, to go. Okay, vamos a ver. Let's take a look at the bottom half here. Llevo dos años en Arizona. I've been in Arizona two years. Nosotros llevamos chaquetas cuando hace frío. We wear jackets when it's cold. You'll see a different example of a, two different verbs that are used more frequently in Latin America to say wearing clothing. Okay, llevar for clothing is a Spain thing, uh, more prevalent in Spain. Other people in other countries know what it means, but they are less are, are more likely to use other verbs. We'll see those in the video. Uh, Hoy llevo una camiseta roja. Today I'm wearing a red t-shirt. Uh, la receta lleva ajo. And here we, when we say garlic, and you know, you're talking about all those little pieces of garlic. By the way, the little pieces of garlic, when you break them apart, are called dientes. Dientes. We call them cloves of garlic. They call them teeth of garlic because they look like little teeth when you break them apart, okay? Uh, but unless I use dientes, uh, then I can say dientes de ajo, cloves of garlic. If I just want to talk about garlic in general, I keep it singular. So this little example on the board, we get rid of that S in ajo, so leave it as just ajo. La receta lleva ajo. The, uh, the uh, recipe, la receta, the recipe has garlic. This is how we say it has garlic. Again, we're talking about ingredients that are in something you're, you're eating. Uh, la pasta lleva demasiado ajo, again. I know if it has like too much garlic, you might think it's like plural, a bunch, but we keep it singular, ajo. La pasta lleva demasiado ajo. Uh, the pasta has too much garlic. Okay. Um, el guacamole lleva aguacates y tomates. We're talking about ingredients. What guacamole has? Avocado, tomatoes. Nosotros llevamos, um, uh, llevamos cinco meses en Arizona. Llevamos cinco uh, meses en Arizona. We've been in Arizona for two months. We don't really need all the durante. Uh, with, llevar with a period of time is just llevar period of time. Llevamos cinco meses, okay? If we've been here five months. If you want to say we're staying five months, like maybe we haven't completed that five month period, uh, you probably use a different verb, which is quedarse. 
nos quedamos, we stay. Like if we want to talk about our habit, un hábito, nos quedamos en Arizona por cinco meses. We stay in Arizona for five months, which means our habit, that total encapsulated time. If you just want to say we've been here for five months and we still are, llevamos cinco meses en Arizona. We have been here for this five months. We're still here. But nos quedamos en Arizona por cinco meses. We stay in Arizona for five months. That's the duration of time that we, as a habit, as a usual thing to do, what we do. Little different verb. Okay. Llevo galletas a la fiesta de mi amigo. I take cookies. I'm taking cookies in to my friend's party. Magnifico. Llevo mi vestido verde a favorito. Mi favorito vestido verde, my favorite green dress a la fiesta. Llevo muchas cosas en mi maleta cuando me voy de vacaciones. When I take off on vacation, I take lots of stuff in my suitcase. Siempre llevo dos litros de agua. I always take along, I always carry two liters of water. Siempre llevo dos litros de agua. Now to say, in order to hike, Again, hacer is following para, a preposition. Para, en, de, a, con, are prepositions. So to say to hike, we'll say para hacer, para with the infinitive. Para hacer caminatas, in order to hike, to go hiking. Okay, uh, vale. Ah, we got an ingredient thing here. El ceviche. A menudo just means often. El ceviche a menudo lleva pescado y jugo de lima. Jugo de lima, lime juice. Uh, fish and lime juice. Ceviche es, es algo muy clásico, un plato clásico. Pablo lleva a sus tres amigos. Pablo's taking his three buddies. Pablo lleva a sus tres amigos, there's the a personal again, a dar un paseo for a spin en su carro nuevo for a ride, for a jaunt around the area, para dar un, uh, a dar un paseo en su carro nuevo. Okay, and I think we've got the bottom half here now. Mañana, or... Oh, see, sí. mañana yo llevo a, and you might need an a there to talk about your pet. Llevo mi gato al, al, you need that to become al, al veterinario. I'm taking my cat to the vet. Uh, because your cat is your beloved pet, you may use an a personal there. Llevo a mi gato al veterinario. Bien. Uh, uh, oh, and this one we need to change a little bit. That el va is going to go away entirely. If you want to say mom takes him, which was what was the intent then. Mom takes him. This el va has to go away. It, it will get turned into lo. It will be changed into lo. Okay. So mama lo Lleva. And again, you're going to see this as an example in the short snippet of the uh, video that I will show you. Su mamá lo lleva. His mom takes him. Su mamá lo lleva a jugar al fútbol. To play soccer. A jugar al, al fútbol los domingos on Sundays. That's telling when. Mi marido, a different word for esposo, husband. Mi marido... Uh, se lleva wouldn't mean take himself. The intent here was to say takes himself. And if he takes himself, we're not really going to use llevar at all. So what we need to do is to take out se lleva because se lleva really means get along with, whether that's get along well or get along badly. And we're going to put in the, a different verb, which actually means drive, manejar. 
If you're just going yourself, we generally use manejar. Mi marido maneja al parque. Mi marido maneja al parque. He drives to the park. Or there's another verb that also means drives. Used in Spain, used in Colombia, depends on the area you're in. Conducir. Mi uh, marido conduce. Mi marido conduce al parque or mi marido maneja al parque. Either one of those are fine. But if he's only going to by himself, it's manejar. It's conducir. Bien? Okay. Um, we've got uh, llevas el pasaporte here. Llevas el pasaporte en, encima means on top of. And I think what you mean is rather than está encima de la taza, it's on top of the cup. What you really mean is you got it with you, on you. Uh, on your person will probably just be contigo, with you, contigo. Llevas el pasaporte contigo. Do you, are you carrying your passport with you, contigo? Okay, bien. Uh, y siempre llevo un cardigan, un suéter, un jersey, uh, a mi trabajo. I always take, uh, or I always wear, or take uh, a little something to wear to work. Okay, vale? So that was our little board with llevar un repaso, a little review of that. Um, excelente. I want, I do want to show you the, the little snippet of the video. And the reason this is helpful is that, Bear with me while I rearrange things from my screen here. The reason this is useful is that uh, this snippet of the video, and I will put the full link to the video um, in the recap email. This video, she's got two segments where she talks about, uh, she gives examples for people using, can you take me somewhere? This is important to know if you use a taxi uh, because you're asking somebody to take you in their taxi or in their car <laughs> or maybe in the bus. You're not sure which area this bus is going to and you want to check to verify, right? Can you take me? She shows how we ask someone that using llevar, but she's going to use a two verb combo. She's going to say, can you take me? Me, me puede llevar. Uh, she's going to use this with her cousin. Just know that in Colombia, which is where she is from, it is normal for them to use usted with family, which I know we've taught you that you use tú with family. But in Colombia, it's normal. It's kind of a normal thing to use usted with family. So you're going to see her using usted. This is OK for you, because if you talk to a taxi driver, you would be using, can you take me? Puede, uh, me puede llevar, me puede llevar, es normal. This would be a normal way for you to ask, uh, also with a cab driver. Okay, a ver, we're going to record this real quickly. So it'll be maybe two minutes at most. Dos, to drive someone to a place or to take someone to a place. Cuando hablamos de alguien que está en un carro y esa persona drives another person a un lugar, decimos llevar, llevar a alguien a algún lugar. Ooh, and we're going to back that up and pause it for a second because when she's got it phrased in the big other person a un lugar decimos llevar llevar a alguien a algún lugar okay we're going to break that apart llevar a alguien the alguien just means somebody someone a alguien that's where you plug in somebody's name you plug in the a and the name of the person. Llevo a mi esposo. I take my husband. Llevo a mi nieto. I'm taking my grandkid. Llevo 
a mi amiga, I'm taking my friend. The a alguien means you plug in the a and the name of the person who's going to be sitting in the car with you. Algún lugar means to some place. So the a alguien, a did not mean to. A was the a personal. In the second phrase, algún lugar, that a does mean to. Algún lugar means to some place. And there we just plug in a and the name of the place. Llevo a mi amiga al supermercado. Al supermercado is to the supermarket. Llevo a mis hijos al cine. I'm taking my kids to the movies. Llevo a, a Luis a, al centro. I'm taking Luis downtown. And she's going to show you an example of her cousin driving up and asking, hey, can you hitch me a ride someplace? Bien? That. Daniel, Daniel, espere. Daniel, wait. Daniel, ¿para dónde va? Ah, she's using para instead of a. Para indicates destination. Some people like to use the word para donde instead of a donde. Para donde va? Where are you going? Where are you headed to? And, she, and remember, even though Daniel, she's using his first name, in Colombia, they like to use the usted form. Para donde va? Where are you going? They like to use it that way in Colombia. Voy para el centro. I'm going downtown. I'm headed downtown. Voy para el centro. You can say, voy, voy al centro. Ay, usted me puede llevar a la universidad? Ah, usted me puede llevar. Can you take me? Usted me puede llevar a la universidad. Can you take me to the university? And now she uses kind of a slang. Porfa. Porfa is a shortening of por favor. It's just saying please. Porfa. It's a slang way of saying that. They cut off the favor part. Porfa. Sí, claro. Yo la llevo. Ah, sí, claro. Yeah, sure. Sí, claro. Yo la llevo. I'll take you. The la is a you. It's a you because she's Andrea. And again, they use the usted thing in Colombia with family. Yo la llevo. I'll take you. Yo la llevo. La is you. If Daniel were talking to a guy, it would be yo lo llevo. Yo lo llevo. Yo la llevo. I'll take you because Andrea is a girl. Y en la tarde, ¿será que me puede llevar a donde mi hermana? Ah, and in the afternoon, hmm, hey, could you maybe also take me to my sisters? My sisters, this is again, a donde mi hermana means where my sister is. A donde mi hermana. Me puede llevar is the core thing you want to look at to express llevar or take me. Me puede llevar. Me, can you take? She could have put the me onto the end of llevar and phrased it as puede llevarme. That also is okay. Puede llevarme. Me puede llevar, me in front of puede, or puede llevarme, me attached to lleve, llevar, both are correct. Ah, bueno, yo la llevo también. Ah, yeah, la va. And there he's got to take you there too. Ay, gracias, me voy a subir. Ah, me voy a subir. I'm going to get in. Subir here does not mean go up. Subir here means get into a vehicle. Me voy a subir. Okay, I'm going to get in. Me voy a subir. She could have put the me on the end of subir. Voy a subirme. Means the same thing. Different position for the word me. Número tres. To where. Here is where I want you to see a difference in how people express where in Latin America. To wear clothes. Llevar. También se usa para hablar de to be wearing something. Decimos, estoy llevando 
una camisa amarilla. Estoy llevando unos pantalones azules. That is more common in Spain. Yo estoy llevando una camisa manga larga de cuadros, unos jeans rotos y unos tenis. Having a long sleeve shirt. En España dicen llevar, pero en Latinoamérica decimos usar. Ah, here's one thing used for wearing clothing. Literally the word use, usar. In Latinoamérica, she's going to give you two verbs which would be more common in Latin America than llevar, for wearing clothing. O tener puesto. Tener puesto. Literally, to have it placed on yourself. Tener puesto. To have on. I have on. I have a shirt on today. Así que yo diría... Yo tengo puesta una camisa amarilla o estoy usando una camisa amarilla. So she's got the Latin American use for llevar with clothing. Different verbs that are used uh, for clothing in that particular context. Vale, magnífico. Okay, we're going to take a look finally at the set of questions, and I'm going to pause. I had, uh, and, and also make this a little bit bigger. This is uh, getting up to where you get into the second recording. Um, I had a set of questions using llevar in different contexts, and we split it down. We did them in groups of three. Uh, sent people off to the, uh, breakout rooms to practice in smaller groups. So we practiced three questions, came back and discussed three more questions, came back and discussed last two. So again, I'll send you this via the email, but just so you could see what the questions were. We're going to take a quick look at them here. Cuantos años o cuantos meses, depends on how long, lleva tu vecino en Arizona. How long has your neighbor been in Arizona? Que lleva tu plato favorito? What kind of food, what kind of ingredients are in your favorite dish? Que lleva una enchilada típica? What does a typical enchilada have in it? Okay, those are the first three. Que tipo de comida pides para llevar? What kind of food do you order to go? Probably not a full steak dinner. <laughs> you sit down and carve up, right? Que tipo de comida? That's where you plug in the name of the food. Vives para llevar. Do you order to go? And para llevar stays para llevar. A quien llevas a un restaurante para cenar? Who do you take to a restaurant to have dinner? Llevo a, and you plug in the name. Llevo a, plug in the name, and then you'll have an a with the name of the restaurant, right? Uh, que llevas en la maleta cuando vas de vacaciones? What do you take along in your suitcase when you go on vacation? And notice here we've got two separate verbs. Que llevas, what do you take along? Cuando vas, when you go. There are two separate activities. What do you bring and you go? When we answer it, we use it, uh, we use two separate verbs, both of them conjugated, okay? Uh, por ejemplo, llevo, llevo blusas, pantalones y zapatos en mi maleta cuando voy de vacaciones. I've got two conjugated verbs. Llevo, because I'm carrying it along. Voy de vacaciones, I go on vacation. Bien. Uh, los últimos dos, the last two. ¿Cuáles son tres cosas que llevas cuando vas al supermercado? What are three things you take along with you when you go to the supermarket? ¿Qué llevas uh, cuando hace fresco? What do you wear when it's cool? ¿Qué llevas a la playa? What do you wear 
to the beach or what do you take to the beach? We could take that two different ways. Que llevas a la playa. Llevo uh, una toalla y un traje de baño. I take a towel and a swimsuit. Uh, llevo crema protectora. I take sunscreen. So uh, we can use a number of things for conversation there. So that brought us up to the B segment. Sorry, I forgot to hit my record button, but I hope this kind of makes up for that. We're good to go. Uh, the second half will have uh, a little more practice and questions on these llevar verbs, these different uses of llevar, and a preview of what you will be prepping for homework, which is using double verbs, two verbs together, not to talk about two separate activities, take along when you go to the beach, but going to the, the beach, want to go to the beach, uh, have to go to the beach. We use two verbs to talk about one activity, what happens there, which means we will not conjugate the two. Okay? Yeah? Magnifico.